Good morning. I am Dr. Shruti Ramachandran, Assistant Professor of English, Government College for Women, Trivandrum. Today, I am going to present on Rachel Carson's A Fable for Tomorrow, an overview. So we are going to look at the text of A Fable for Tomorrow, and then we will go on and do an analysis of the text. A Fable for Tomorrow is the introductory chapter of this very famous book called Silent Spring, which was published by Rachel Carson in the year 1962. Silent Spring has sparked environmental movements across the globe. And Rachel Carson has been called a pioneer of environmental activism and also ecofeminism. This particular text that we have to deal with is the most haunting and famous chapter of Silent Spring. This narrative depicts a nameless American town where every form of life from fishes, birds, trees to human children, they have all been silenced by the insidious effects of a white granular powder. Now, please remember that Rachel Carson does not mention the name of the powder in the narrative, but it is about DDT because that has been her primary concern. Now, the narrative, it begins with a very idyllic, very romantic, picturesque description of the golden land. So what we have there is a fiesty feast of flora and fauna and where there is a very nostalgic evocation of the beauty of the land right from the settler to the modern times. Then after this very beautiful introduction, there is a sudden shift in tone. Suddenly it becomes grim and a turn to the mysterious. The town mentioned is plagued by a strange malady, a strange disease, and she wonders whether it could be witchcraft or the act of some enemy. Everybody in the town is falling sick, is getting afflicted by this malady, and she calls it a spring without voices, a spring where the birds do not chirp anymore. There is no chittering of the birds. Everything around is silent. So there is silence, which is almost deafening in the town. It is not just the birds that have been silenced. Every life form has been affected. The trees don't blossom anymore. The hens don't brood anymore. Everywhere around, there is silence. There is death. And then she finds out what the real culprit is. It is this white granular powder, the residues of which have remained behind. And then she says, it is not the act of some enemy. It is not witchcraft. It is the humans themselves. The humans themselves are responsible for destroying the life around them. And they cannot really escape the culpability involved. She concludes the introductory chapter by commenting that the town may be fictional, but the misfortunes that are depicted are quite real. The imagined tragedy has become a stark reality. Now, by way of analysis, we can see that Rachel Carson, with prophetic accuracy, has described this non-existent town to expose the aftermath, the gruesome aftermath of synthetic pesticide usage. She reminds people of their own involvement in destroying and degrading the biodiversity and the environment around them. She pleads to the people to take care of themselves and the people around them. She outlines the result of indiscriminate poisoning by pesticides. Now, the work of Rachel Carson was instrumental in getting DDT and other synthetic pesticides banned in the US. Today, we know that her prediction in A Fable for Tomorrow has become reality. We have examples of Chernobyl, we have examples of the Bhopal gas tragedy, and we have the tragedy of endosulfan usage in Kerala. The work emphasizes the need for environmental protection and biodiversity conservation. This is sadly a fable where the animals cannot speak. The animals have been muted, silenced by the humans. So I would recommend this narrative to all the students who are interested in knowing more about environmental conservation and biodiversity protection. Thank you.